is a welcome to the session. We're going to make the session in English because for global speakers, no good in Spanish. So the session is on Microsoft Machine Learning and I will um, you mentioned this morning uh, properties that need to be incorporated into machine learning um, uh, systems. Uh, so these systems are being deployed in very important applications, but uh, now people are starting to realize that some uh, relevant features need to be incorporated. Uh, this morning, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, explainability. Uh, and the focus here uh, in this session will be on security, the security of machine learning uh, algorithms. Um, and we were saying that, uh, well, this was about uh, using uh, mathematics and data science, so the maths that uh, we are incorporating, uh, that are initially machine learning, include the uh, data theory, stochastic optimization, and the university. So the, the main, the main uh, focus is on security and cybersecurity, but uh, with, uh, with the years, uh, uh, we realize that we can actually use it uh, in other domains, for example, in business competition. And indeed, that would be the case. So, the, the, the idea is that first, uh, when we introduce, uh, we would need, we, it would give us sort of a broad overview on the challenge machine learning. And then, for this year, we will be able to talk on uh, a specific uh, example in, in, in classification, and the challenge classification, which is a quite important. Uh, topic area in the in, in uh, Then I think I uh, uh, these problems are uh, tremendously complicated from a, from a, a computational point of view, so we will pro provide a proposed uh, uh, alternative approach. Uh, and finally, as I, as I mentioned, we uh, recently started uh, uh, dealing with uh, financial applications, so Daniel uh, and will have to introduce some uh, financial problems which are interesting. Uh, I should say that this uh, research, uh, we, we talked this morning on finance. This has not received any finance from the Spanish government, but it has received finance uh, from AXA, the insurance company, from EBA and Nashavak, uh, from the European Commission, and also from the uh, United States as well. And uh, we'll have like 25 minutes plus five minutes for questions. For, yeah, the first for Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Ray Navello from, from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences. And I'm going to, as David says, I'm going to present a general overview of adversarial machine learning, focusing on a, on a probability perspective that uh, we have developed the last uh, few years. Let me first introduce a little bit the topic of adversarial machine learning. Uh, we have to remember that. Um, a central assumption for, for machine learning or for predictive inference in general is that the training and operation data have to come from the same distribution. And then, in general, the goal is to achieve this that we, we call out of the sample generalization. That is, given a new instance, a new sample from the same distribution, but that is not in the training set, we want to make predictions or make whatever inference about that in instance. However, we have to realize that out of the sample generalization is not the same as out of the distribution generalization. And in many real life applications, we have to focus on, we have to analyze samples from different distribution than the one that we have used for the, for the training stage. And there are multiple ways in which we can get out of the distribution samples. And here we would like to focus in the case in which there is an adversary, another agent that is intentionally manipulating the, the data instances that we will receive in order to pull the learning system and achieve some benefits. And that is the goal of adversarial machine learning. I illustrate here with, with a couple of examples. Here we have an example in, in spam detection, which is essentially a classification problem. This is just a picture in which I consider two covariates, x1 and x2. Uh, and this, this line here is the decision boundary. Everything that is on top of the line is going to be considered malicious, and if it is down, it's going to be considered legitimate. An adversary could modify the, the contact of one of the, of the emails, making it cross the decision boundary and making us believe that it was a legitimate 
email when it, it is actually malicious. And that, that way it evades the classification. Another example here is in, in computer vision. We have a, an image that an autonomous driving system will receive. And based on this image, the task is to detect the, the pedestrians and, and break the, the variable. With clean data, the prediction is correct. But an adversary can add a very, very little noise that in this image we, we cannot even see that is uh, for, for humans is, is almost invisible. But yeah, we believe this little noise, noise can, can make the, the autonomous driving system not to detect the pedestrians and is uh, very bad consequences. So yeah, I hope these this, uh, examples illustrate how important is to take into account uh, adversarial aspects when, when training machine learning algorithms and especially when deploying them in, in security settings. And the, the goal of adversarial machine learning is precisely to produce algorithms that are robust to the data manipulations that may occur depending on, on the application. The usual workflow for developing a robust uh, machine learning systems entails mostly three steps. The first one is what we call gathering intelligence. We have to study about the vulnerabilities of the learning system we consider, study likely data manipulations and the objectives of the, of the attacker. With this information, we go to step two. We need to forecast attacks. We need, we need to produce models of how the attacker will manipulate the data. And once we have those models, we have to protect machine learning algorithms. That means making inferences that are robust to the attacks that we have assigned previously. I'm going to give more details on each of these steps and illustrate with, uh, with some traditional examples in adversarial machine learning. For the first one, that in intelligence, we usually consider three aspects of the attacker. First of all, the goals, and depending on the goals, uh, we study two, two dimensions, which is the violation type. Can be an integrity violation, in which the objective of the attacker is to is, precise, is, is to move certain instances towards a target prediction. For instance, if you imagine for detection, in for detection, the, the objective of the attacker is to manipulate the fraudulent transactions in order to revive classification, to make the classifier believe that they are legitimate. Availability violations are those in which the goal of the attacker is just to increase the misclassification error, reduce the performance in general to make the system not useful. And in privacy violation, the goal is just to extract some more information about, about the, the learning system. According to the, the second dimension, the attack specificity, we, we distinguish targeted attacks, which are when deal with certain types of instances, or indiscriminate attacks that we deal with any type. Uh, the second important thing we need to consider is the attack knowledge. In, on the one end, we can have black, what we call black box attackers, in which they have no knowledge at all about the learning system, but they can query it somehow. For instance, imagine a spammer, a spam, a spammer can send a few emails in order to determine which one is going to be the classification in those emails, but has no detail at all about the, the specifics of the learning system. On the other end, we have white box attacks in which we assume that everything is known from the, from the learning system. If it is a parametric model, we assume that the model is known, the parameters are known, everything. And anything in between of those is going to be called gray box attacks. And finally, we have to consider the capabilities of the attacker. And we distinguish poisoning and evasion attacks. Poisoning attacks are those in which the attacker is going to inject malicious instances in the training set in order to induce errors when the algorithm is deployed. The evasion attacks is going to, the, the bad instances are going to be injected at, at operations time, trying, for instance, to, to evade classification. Once we have this, this um, information, we have to focus like the attacks, this is based making models of how an adversary could attack in instances. And it's important to, to mention here that these models of the attacker, they have to include our uncertainty about the elements of the attacks. And that, this is a point that we emphasize during the talk. Well, with this, a classical technique for producing attacks is called fast driving side method, which is a, an attack that focuses classification systems. And I'm going to illustrate it here as an example. 
is an availability violation in the sense that the goal is to increase uh, the misclassification error. And it's an evasion attack in the sense that it uh, targets the operation of the page of the algorithms. Is white box in the sense that uh, the attacker will assume that the classifier is minimizing a certain loss function, parameterized uh, with, with parameters beta, and also assumes that the uh, attacker has full knowledge about this function or at least about the first order derivatives. Once with this, uh, and also assuming that the and also considering that the attacker has resources to perturb each of the vectors, each vector of covariance, just by adding a small quantity epsilon, the optimal attack is, is essentially what the attacker is going to do, is going to move every vector of covariance in the increasing direction of the, of the cost function, right? Oh, well, well, this is very, very simple. It was uh, quite impressive how deep neural networks, how uh, non-robust or how sensitive were with respect to this design. This is a simple experiment we did. We trained a convolutional neural network in the NIST dataset for digital recognition. It's very easy to get accuracy 99% using any of the pre-trained models that are out there. And just for targeting the attacks, the, the, the images as I, I showed before, Using the fast gradient same method, the, the accuracy drops to 62%. And this is an example of an original image in which the prediction is a two. And then with this little noise that doesn't make nothing for us, we, we still see a two there. The prediction is going to be a seven for the convolution neural network. And this was pretty, pretty impressive how like uh, neural networks, how sensitive neural networks were for. for to this kind of super simplistic attacks. Well, point three was in the workflow was to protect uh, machine learning algorithms with respect to attacking models that we have produced. This is the same as in, can be trained also as making inference in presence of adversary and inference in particular that is robust to these data manipulations that we have studied before. Here, we distinguish uh, two ways of protecting learning systems. One takes place in operations time. That means once we receive a new instance, we are going to change the way in which the prediction is done in order to account for the presence of the adversary. And the other one is protecting during training. We are going to change the way algorithms are trained to anticipate the future presence of an adversary. And I illustrate each of these with uh, two classical examples. Both based in game theory, as uh, game theory was a, is a classical paradigm to, to model this confrontation between adversaries and learning systems. The first one is uh, deals with protecting during operation, was proposed by Dalji and, and, and colleagues in 2004, was a test paper in other science machine learning. They model this confrontation as a game. They focus on classification, and in this game, the classifier needs to find an optimal classification function. And at the same time, the adversary needs to find optimal future change. They prove the existence of Nash equilibrium in this game, but they also realize that the competing Nash equilibrium was intractable. So they propose a, an alternative myopic version of the game in which the classifier acts first, assuming clean data, and then um, um, produces the, the classification function. And then at the prediction time, assuming that A has knowledge of the classifier elements, knows everything about the classifier transforms the vector of variance x into x prima, solving an optimization problem that entails minimizing some transformation costs subject to producing a level three, that is changing the decision of the classifier. Then the classifier, after observing this distance x prima, which has been attacked, and assuming that has knowledge about the attacker strategy, makes their optimal classification, maximizing expected utility. That is, here you see is the utility that the classifier will get when declaring that instance x prima belongs to class yc when it is its actual class is y. And the y given x prima is a predictive, posterior predictive distribution. You can see that this is very simple. This is solving this problem is essentially the same as solving this one. But here the trick is to account for the presence of the adversary, is to compute this probability distribution, the probability of observing instance x prima given y, marginalizing out the original instance, which is what we do here. 
And this distribution B of x prima in an x and y is going to be a point mass in the solution of the optimization problem of the attacker. We know perfectly the attacker, so we know how the attacker will behave when it's receiving instance x with plus y. So the probability of, of uh, we observing x prima is going to be just one if x prima is the solution of the optimization problem in the statute. Another classical example entails protecting uh, protecting systems during during training. Uh, these are the so-called social prediction games, and and yeah, the goal is to learn parameters in a parametric models in a robust way. Without an adversary, the classifier will minimize this expected cost function with respect to theta, using for this the probability distribution of the data at training time, d of x comma y. However, if there is an adversary present, the subversary is going to influence the data generation process at operation time, and we cannot assume anymore that the data distribution is going to be d of x comma y. It's going to be different. To account for this, what they propose in, in other separation games is to find the optimal parameters, optimizing this expected cost function with respect to p tilde, which is a modified probability distribution. And in fact, the attacker is going to be mean, it's going to find the optimum p tilde in the sense that it's going to be maximizing minimizing some expected cost function. Okay. Then under common knowledge, a uh, Nash theory of this game can be found for uh, optimizing the regularizing critical versions of these of these directional costs. Once again, we are assuming common knowledge, and we argue that in most security applications, this is not realistic because there is incentives for the attacker to conceal information. A uh, particular version of, version of uh, adversary games is called adversarial training, proposed by, by Matt Rieto in 2018. And this is especially this is a serious version of the previous game in which the attacker loss is minus our loss. And for attackers restricted to generate attacks of this form here. So it's very easy to see that the, the, the equivalent to the national equilibrium of the previous problem in this new setting and creates uh, maximize uh, solving this optimization. And this is arguably the most uh, traditional, the most established, well-established defense in, in adversarial machine learning. Well, as we said, uh, we think that uh, the, there is a need to mitigate somehow the strong common knowledge assumptions that are happening in previous strategies. And that's the reason that uh, during my PhD, I've been working with my colleagues in, in a probabilistic framework for adversarial machine learning. This framework is described in these these two papers. And here I'm gonna give a quick a quick summary. The previous workflow adapts to this probabilistic uh, approach to machine learning. Then we will study the data manipulation that the person might undertake, and then we will produce probabilistic models of the adversary. And those models are gonna be probabilistic now because we are not gonna have enough information to make them deterministic. We are we are gonna have uncertainty about the adversary and we will encode we will quantify our, our uncertainty using <laughs> our and finally we will robustify events and gene against such kind of models depending on how three is done two approaches again we can do it at operation time and we will create an object that is a robust predictive distribution or we can do it at training time and this will entail a study what we call the robust posterior distribution let me go quickly over those during operations, the leg, we assume that the learning system has trained a model that can compute a predictive distribution, a posterior predictive distribution. I didn't mention that we focus, we, 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 we focus on Bayesian inference. Like we, we consider that the classifier is Bayesian. And then C is going to receive a potentially an update to provide the X prime. If she's not aware of the adversary, she's going to make the decision maximizing posterior respective utility, where here is the posterior predictive distribution. However, C, if C knows that the instance x prime is potentially attacked. Instead of doing this, it's going to model her uncertainty about the latent originating instance x through this distribution. And she's going to marginalize out the possible latent originating instance to compute a posterior predictive distribution. And this is what we call the, the robust posterior predictive distribution. In general, it's, it's very hard to compute the gap integral analytically. So we, we have approximated using Monte Carlo. We sample from this distribution and samples, and we approximate in general this way. 
So the only thing we need to make this framework work is to produce samples from P of X given X prime. That is the, the, our distribution about the legendary originating instance, given that we have observed a character X prime. I'm not going to go into details. This essentially means making inference about the latent originating instance. And for doing this, we need to define an attractive model. That is a distribution that quantifies our uncertainty about how the attractive is going to behave when observing distance X or the original distance X. If we have common knowledge, as I mentioned, this is going to be deterministic. It's going to be a point mass in the optimal strategy for the attacker. But as we have uncertainty, this is going to be probabilistic. If we can sample from this attacking model, it's more or less easy to generate approximate samples from, from the distribution of interest, leveraging approximate page and computation techniques, as Fabrizio will, will most likely explain in the, in the next talk. And how to sample from an attacking model? Here, the important thing is that any attacking model can be used. For instance, we can consider that the, the fast gradient sign method and produce E of X prime and given X. Yes. Changing X according to fast gradient same as the attack, but we propose another. We propose an attacking model that is based in expected uh, in inflation in the vision theory. How much time do we have? Maybe two minutes. Okay. Well, in this situation, we we just consider that the attack takes expected utility maximizer, and we include some uncertainty on these elements, defining some random. Expected utilities and some random probabilities. I'm not going to get into the identity because I'm lacking of time. But uh, to finish, when we protect you in training time, which is the, the alternative, uh, we are going to change the way training is done to account into the to take into account the future presence of the adversary. For this approach, we restrict the anti-parametric models, which are also differential both with respect to theta and with respect to the instances. And we are going to assume that we have some training data that is screened by assumption. The way to do so, taking minimizing or mitigating the, the common knowledge assumptions is what we call what, what is called that the Bayesian adversarial learning. If the adversary is not aware of the presence of the classifier, the, the usual way to do the training in Bayesian interest is to produce samples of the posterior distribution. But if there is, a, there is an adversary, uh, that at operation time is going to be changing the data. This is going to affect the data generation mechanism, and we'll have to take this into account. The way to do it is compute a robust adversarial posterior distribution, which entails marginalizing out every possible contaminated data that we can see, given the data that we have to observe. Again, this integral is very hard to solve, but we can sample pretty easily here standard view samples. We will iterate these two samplings. One of the contaminated data, given the parameters and given the original data. And the second one, the, the, the parameters given the contaminated data that you have, we have generated in the previous sample. If we iterate, it's very easy to prove that for large T, these samples are samples from the, from the joint distribution of contaminated data and theta and the parameters. I, as a consequence, that the parameters theta are going to be samples from the, from the marginal distribution, which is the robust procedure. In the paper, we explain how to make those samples uh, operational. And, and also, we, we prove that adversarial training is a, we can recover adversarial training as a maximum posterior estimate of theta under this robust uh, posterior distribution. Just to finish, give you some example in, in digital recognition of how our algorithm compares with, with others. Here, I've got the intensity of the attack with respect to the accuracy over the, the attack set. And we can see that our algorithm does it better in, in a great part of the domain with respect to two other classic strategies, a better train and a logic page, which is also classical defense. And this is against uh, another type of attack, and we see that the results are consistent. Well, some conclusions. Uh, we have proposed a, a probabilistic framework for adversarial machine learning that accounts explicitly for the presence of an adversary, but also for our uncertainty about his decision making. We have proposed two protection strategies during operations and training. The previous game theoretical strategies can be easily recovered as particular as, as limit cases of the, of the probabilistic approach that we have proposed. And also, any attacking model can be incorporated. This gives generality to our framework, and we have proposed one based on decision theory. And that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>